Oh, those came out easy. Welcome to part two on the 1971 Yamaha CS200. Uh, these bikes are very close to the RD200, pretty much brothers of the RD200. Very cool bikes. Um, it's got the dual cylinders, dual pistons, dual pipes on this thing. Two stroke, very cool bike. And um, last video, we uh, picked this thing up. I think we, let's see here. <sighs> what did we pay for? 50 bucks we paid for it. It was up for sale for $100 and we uh, offered 50 bucks and the guy was like, yep, come pick it up. Uh, it's been sitting for over 17 years. So it hasn't run in 17 years. Today we're going to fix that problem. We're going to make this thing run. So last video it popped over a couple times but didn't stay running. Um, it really didn't run. I wouldn't call it running last video. It was more of like, like I said before, just popping over. Um, the kickstart gear stripped out, so that's not good. I'm gonna look into that today. We've got to clean out the carburetors today. It's got two carburetors, so each one has to be taken apart. Um, the throttle is stuck on both carburetors, so I'm guessing the slides in here are stuck. Oh boy, I can't even get it up with my fingers, so those are really stuck in there. So hopefully they're not too bad. Um, and then we got a new battery for it. So this, this battery, I looked around for probably three hours today trying to find a battery for that thing. I went to Walmart, Fleet Farm, Batteries Plus, and Advanced Auto, and none of them had it. So I had to do a quick search and figure out what kind of battery would fit in there. This is the only one that was the correct dimensions that uh, would probably work for this thing. So we're charging this one up and um, hopefully that works and hopefully it can crank over this uh, dual engine here. Other than that, we've got spark, uh, we've got fuel, so basically all we need to do now is make sure fuel is getting into the carburetors. Um, the air filter's clean and everything else is good. The oil's in here, check the oil again, even though it's tilted. So it probably won't be a correct reading. Yeah, the oil was clean in this bike for some reason. Very strange. But yeah, everything else is good to go here. So, let's start out with cleaning up these carburetors. And then, oh yeah, I almost forgot we have to clean up the gas tank for this thing too. It's over here. Oh, by the way, check this out. What is this? This is a bench, a workbench. <laughs> you don't see many of these in my videos, but um, I finally got this workbench cleared off. So we're gonna be using this more often. I've gotta get some lighting up here. But um, yeah, we can start using this. And we got a uh, we got a vise here we can use. I kind of clean up the garage a little bit here. So it's looking a little bit better. Have to get rid of these tables and the ladder right here, but everything else is kind of organized. You can kind of see. Let's actually try to fix this, this kickstart first. All right, so. This somehow stripped out last video when I was kicking it over. This thing actually has pretty good compression considering it was sitting for how many years. Let's see if we can get this thing off of here now. We'll work on getting that out and then come back. Alright, let's see what's going on with this. Doesn't look super rounded off. It's not too bad. It's nice to have a kickstart so you don't have to rely on the battery for cranking this thing over. A little stripped out. It does have a lot of grime in there though. Alright, so I put a new bolt in there and really cranked that thing down. Um, it's not stripping yet, so we'll see if that 
holds up or not. But uh, let's uh, work on the carburetors now. Uh, um, there's two of them, like I said before. Here's where the oil pump is connected to. You can see the oil lines running down to here. So we gotta take those off. Actually, I think those are right to the side of the cylinder. So we might not even have to take those off. Looks like there's a looks like there's a little fitting right there. We have to get in there with a screwdriver. Looks like a flat head. Yeah, that was nice and easy. Carburetors out of there. Let's see if the top can come off. Oof. She's on there. There we go. Who thinks the slide's gonna come out of there? I don't think so. Maybe with a little flathead screwdriver action. Whew. Uh, she's on there pretty good. This is funny because this is the same thing that happened to my RD350. What I ended up doing was boiling them. And it finally came loose. Let that soak for a little bit. See if something happens here. Just needs a little help, I think. Whew. Those are on there. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, there's a lot of sticky crap on there. That's why it was stuck. It's like rust. But we got the carburetor out. Just a little guy. And you can tell it's the uh, the left side because there's a little port right here that connects to the other carburetor. All right, let's try to get this one off of here. Who thinks this one's stuck too? I think the slide's stuck in there. Here is the crossover tube from the tank. It's junk. Let's see, is this. Ah, oh, it's on there tight. Thing. Oh man. Oh. Oh, holy. That thing is on there. Man, oh man. Ah, there we go. Whew. I think this one's gonna be stuck too, though. I have a feeling. Nope. That one slid right out. <laughs> awesome. Well, that one's that one's easy. That was good. All right, let's go take a look on the inside. All right, let's take a look at the left side carburetor first. This one seemed to be in a little bit better condition. At least the slide wasn't stuck. Let's see what's going on in here. Oh, those came out easy. Surprisingly. Oh, like nothing. Usually you really have to crank on these. Wow. Well, that saves me drilling out screws. Yeah, I like this carburetor so far. I like it a lot. Now let's see what the inside looks like. How bad do you think it's gonna be? That is the question. Hopefully not too bad. Please don't be corroded. 
Ah, uh, it came off pretty easily. Oof. It's not, not horrible, not horrible. Looks like that was repaired at one point. <laughs> it's really not that bad. I'll probably let these sit in the ultrasonic cleaner for a bit, just for reassurance, but let's see if we can get that out of there. Take the sky off of there. Well, keep that on, I guess. All right. Let's see what we're running for the main. That looks pretty clean. Main jet is going to be a 55, 55 main here. It's uh, clear, that's good. Let's see what the pilot is. I bet you that's, what, a 25 there? I guess we can take this guy out too. Take them all out and let them soak. This is the idle adjuster. And let's see how many screws this guy is in. Air screw. We're at one, two, three, three and a fourth. About three and a fourth turns out. Got a little spring in there. There we go. All right, now we've got that pilot jet. Gotta get out. All right, let's see what the pilot jet looks like. This one is a, yep, 25. Oh, no. Yeah, it is 25, I was right. That guy's clear. Wow. Actually clear. That's crazy. I don't see that very often. Let's see if the little... Yeah, the needle's even coming down. That carburetor's not even that bad. We'll let these sit in the ultrasonic cleaner for a bit. But yeah, not bad at all. Huh. Here's the bowl. Let's see if that little guy's open. Yeah, that's clear too. So this carburetor wasn't bad at all. Hmm. Sweet. All right, one carburetor down. Put all the components there. Next one up. Let's see what's going on with this one. Okay, so this one might be a little worse than the other one. <laughs> it's like a mystery going into it. Like, oh, how bad is it gonna be? What's the damage? Why wasn't it running? They tell a lot about a bike. All right, here we go. That was a little bit harder to get off. I bet you it's, oh, ooh, yeah, a little bit crunchier in there. <laughs> Just a tad worse. You can see there's some gas, old gas left in there. That's why it got so bad. All right, so we're gonna work on getting these cleaned up. Probably put both of them in the ultrasonic cleaner for a bit. Got these cooking away in here. We'll let those run for about 20 minutes. See if it cleans up. Whew, it's raining pretty good out here. Check that out. <laughs> really coming down. Anyway, we got the carburetors done here. I have the ultrasonic cleaner and uh, all cleaned up. Looking pretty decent. Um, everything's put back together. We got, they got pretty clean in the ultrasonic cleaner, not too bad. I used WD-40 as a degreaser and then just hot water 
and that's what they turned out like because I, I ran out of degreaser so yeah it wasn't too bad and I put a new line on for the breather tube right there so alright also I sanded down the, the slide right here and all that gunk on it before so let's test out the throttle and see if oh yeah those work so the throttle's not locked up it was the slide all right, let's reinstall these carburetors, put some gas in it, and try to start this thing up. Check it out. This is the one that was stuck before. We got her. Both slides are hitting the bottom. You can hear them. So we should be good to go. I'm excited. All right, guys, both carburetors are in there, all clean, um, all hooked up, ready to go. As you know, throttle works now. So we should be good. Um, I hooked up this gas line and then did the crossover to the two. So it's feeding both at the same time. So we can just pour some gas down there and test it out. We're still waiting on the battery, like I said before. I don't know why this is taking so long. Turn green yet? Nope, it's still red. So hopefully this battery will have enough juice to start this thing up. If not, we'll have to wait for a little bit. But um, yeah, it's definitely coming along. I think it's going to start up right away. The compression on this thing is actually really good for a 200. Like, it's actually pretty hard to turn over. So, I'm thinking it's going to run just fine. I do want to put a couple bolts in the, uh, the pipe right here. There isn't one right there holding it on. So I'm going to find a bolt for that, and then um, I pumped up the tire in the front, and it uh, slowly loses air, so that needs a new tube. For testing purposes, I can pump this tire up quick, and we can take this thing for a little test drive once we get the tank on there. The tank needs to be soaked in vinegar. Um, I meant to do that a couple days ago, but forgot to do that. But um, for the time being, we can just hook up a little tank right here and ride around. See what uh, speed we can get up to here. <laughs> Um, since the speedometer is on here, it goes up to 100. That's uh, probably doesn't go 100. <laughs> I bet you this is not the original speedometer. I bet you this is off of like an RD 400, I'm guessing. But um, anyway, let's um, let's put some gas in this thing, get the battery hooked up, and try to start this thing up. Let's get some gas down into the carburetors. No leaking yet. All right, gas in the carburetor. Let's uh, get that battery hooked up here. All right, before we get the battery in, I just want to take a look at the oil pump here. Should be right underneath this cover. Hopefully these screws come out of here. All right, check out the oil pump. Looks pretty good in there. Let's see if the throttle moves it when I twist it. Yeah, no leaking in there. Yeah, that looks really clean. Awesome, so I think that's gonna be working. We can check, if, we can check and see if it's working if you just hold this pump up like that. And then oil should be pumping through to this little fitting up here to the carburetor. You can see how it kind of leads up to the carburetor on either side. But that's how you test and see if that pump's working. We're uh, running pre-mix so it doesn't really matter at this point, but eventually we're going to want to check and see if that works. Probably before we add the tank of gas to it. Alright, time to install the battery here. 
this battery was like $79. Way expensive. <clears throat> and it's just an acid battery, it's not like it's anything special. Hopefully it's a good one. Hopefully it works. Oh, <laughs> nice. No sparks. Aha! Alright, battery slid right in. I forgot how to turn the bike on. I think it was the red and the brown were connected. If I'm not mistaken. Let's see if that works here. Yeah. But, it looks like it doesn't turn over quite yet with that battery. So, we'll kick it over a couple times. See if this thing starts up. That would be awesome if it did. All right, here we go. We should have spark, it should be good. Choke it. That definitely started up right there. The kick lever keeps on stripping out though. Hmm. Might have to bump start this thing. Alright, no go with the bump start. Let's check and see if we're getting spark here. Seems weird. It's not starting up. Could just be the battery. Not quite sure. Let's see if she's getting spark. Yeah, for sure getting spark. Maybe we're just out of gas. All right, no go on the bump start again. Um, I'm gonna take out both plugs, check for spark, make sure the timing's correct, and then try this again. All right, let's see if it starts up now. I've got the kick lever to work, kinda. We'll see. Definitely started there. All right, back the next day, bought a new battery. It's bigger, better. Um, it's a solid state one without the, uh, it already came pre-filled with the acid and already charged up and everything. Hooked this up, still didn't crank over, then all of a sudden just stopped cranking over altogether. So I'm like, what the heck? So came over here to the starter. 
um, generator right over here, and I could see like a little spark over here when it was starting. I was like, what the heck? What is it doing, you know? Why is it doing that? So this spring right there, I don't know if you guys can see that. Right there, that spring, that's pushing this thing down to make contact. And this was touching that metal piece in there and it wasn't, it was sparking and it wasn't pushing that all the way down. So I'm thinking the spring is worn. Let's see if I can get a screwdriver in here. See how it pushes that thing in like that? It's supposed to be out. See it's hard with one hand, yeah like that. So it's like that, pushing on it like that. I don't know if you guys can see that in there. See, it's like that. Then when you go and try to start it, check this out. It would smoke right there. See that? See that little fire? But watch this, when you go like this, and you push that in, I'll have to get this set up on a tripod. All right, let's try this again. So I'm gonna push down on this black thing, holding the starter. See, then it cranks over just fine. It's very strange. If you put it on choke, let's see what happens here. Just a little smoky. But yeah, it runs pretty good. Woohoo! Smoky girl. But yeah, so that was the fix. And it took me a long time to figure that out. But um, I'm not really sure what I do now. Do I put that spring on there? Not really too sure what to do. So I'm gonna try to look at the other springs on here and see what they're doing. See, you can see one right here too. I think it just like broke off or something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it just like broke off. Let's see what's this one doing. Not really sure what that spring is doing in there. But yeah, we'll, we'll look into it and uh, try to take this thing for a little ride.
looks like it's only running on one cylinder here. I think it's only running on one cylinder. We're gonna check for spark in the spark plug, see if we can spark. All right, we've got spark. We're gonna, we're gonna test compression right now on the left cylinder. So we get. Looks like we got 110, 20, 125 pounds. That's good. It should be running. We'll try swapping the spark plugs. All right, try to start it back up again, and uh, same thing. Uh, it's not running on this side. I think it's something to do with this. It's kind of broken in there. We don't have that spring in there, so um, when I push down on that, it pops back over. So I'm guessing it's something messed up in there. So we're gonna try to look for that part. All right, so we got to hear it run. Um, it's running pretty good on this cylinder. On this cylinder, we still have to figure out what the problem is. I think it's the pipe. Uh, I think the pipe is clogged on this side. I tried to clear out some of it and this is what came out of it. So you can see all these huge chunks of um, carbon built up in there. So I'm guessing it's the pipe. I took off the pipe and it did run a lot better without the pipe. Um, we've got 125 pounds of compression in that cylinder, so we should be good there. Um, I might take off the head just to check that piston out next video and take a look at that. Maybe a ring is stuck or something, but I mean, we have compression. We shouldn't have a problem. Um, but yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's the pipe. But anyway, you guys got to hear it run. I was hoping we could ride today, but I think that's going to be next video, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and maybe even learned something. And uh, I guess we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Till next time, we are out.